If you wanted to build the nicest train in the United States, what would you do? Maybe you'd identify major population centers relatively close together but plagued by unmanageable traffic. Perhaps you'd design stations in the very hearts of those cities and link them with high-speed and energy-efficient locomotives pulling beautiful and comfortable cars. Well, that's what they're trying in Florida. Let's get on board the Bright Line. Hello, jet setters and rail fans. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in downtown Miami, but I've got to make my way up to West Palm Beach. Now, those two cities are served by the nation's only privately owned and operated passenger rail service. It's the Bright Line, and I hope you'll join me as we check out this service together. The trip will take about 72 minutes to cover the roughly 70 miles or so along the east coast of Florida from Miami to West Palm Beach. The name Bright Line carries throughout the experience, including at the station. It's a bright and cheery space that doesn't feel anything like other rail experiences in the United States. These Bright Line stations, which are not shared stations, are all located within the urban cores of the cities they serve, making them easily accessible. Here at the Miami station, you can head upstairs where there's a food court, which is open to anyone, even if you don't have a Bright Line ticket. Several restaurants are currently open, but not all of them, at least not yet. The Bright Line opened in 2017, but suspended service in March 2020 for obvious reasons, so it's not surprising the station is still not operating on all cylinders. There's also this area called the Common Lounge, accessible to everyone. There are desks and plugs to get work done. But I headed back through the straightforward and quick security check to the waiting area. You'll have to scan your ticket into one of these machines, walk through a metal detector, and pass your bags through an x-ray machine. That's right. Unlike Amtrak, your bags will be scanned here. Behind those security checks, though, you'll find plenty of seating, along with a bar and a convenience store. There's also a premium lounge back here, and to that point, there are two classes of service on board the Bright Line, smart and premium. The biggest difference is that passengers with premium tickets can access the lounge, as well as get drinks and snacks for no additional cost. With my $37 premium class ticket, I wasn't going to miss the lounge, so I scanned that ticket again and headed back. This is a railroad lounge. I could have passed on this space and saved a few bucks with a select ticket, which cost $22. But I'm glad I didn't. This is a really nice way to kick off this journey, even though it's so short. There's plenty of comfortable seating, including couches, and chairs, even desks. There are a lot of drinks and snacks included in the premium ticket price. You can get coffee here and there's a refrigerator with water and soft drinks. There's also an automated self-serve bar that provides beer and wine. Passengers have to submit a scan of their driver's license through a website on a mobile device. Now, frankly, I found it clunky to use, but eventually I did get it to work. Cheers. Premium boarding began early, before anyone else, but I didn't hear an announcement. Maybe I missed it. Our departure, which was scheduled for 1.48 p.m. on a Wednesday, looked to be on time. It's time to get boarded. Let's go. The train itself was beautiful, clean, and really embraced the name Brightline. It was bright. Boarding was extremely simple, with each car labeled clearly, and there were signs hanging from the ceiling, too. I dropped my suitcase in the premium car before heading to the back to check out the locomotive. There's one at each end. By the way, you can also check a bag if you'd prefer that option. There were 16 departures the day I traveled, so finding a time that works for you should be pretty easy. Each Brightline train set currently consists of four passenger coaches, that's three smart cars and one premium car, along with two Siemens diesel electric locomotives. The whole train set was manufactured by Siemens. Currently, the train runs from Miami to West Palm Beach with a stop in Fort Lauderdale. According to Brightline, in 2022, they're going to begin service all the way to Orlando. Even though the train set can hold up to 248 people, it was pretty empty on the day I traveled. There were only four of us in the premium car and another dozen or so throughout the rest of the train. The seats are comfortable, and I had enough room at my assigned seat, 3C, for my small backpack. There's a two-part tray table, which I found large enough to get work done. There are also USB and US plugs, and it's possible to sit in a section like that over there with a table between four chairs. Just before we departed, our cabin attendant offered a cold towel. It was a welcome treat on this hot, humid Florida day. And we departed the station 
right on time. If you visit Florida, is this a service you think you're going to use, or would you prefer your own rental car? Let me know in the comments. Now our attendant came around with a snack tray that included basic chips, crackers, and the like before returning with a drinks cart. Both snacks and drinks are included with a premium ticket, and passengers in the smart class of service can purchase them. She spoke highly of the pre-mixed old-fashioned, and who was I to argue? In 2018, news that Virgin Group would become a minority investor in the Brightline broke, and that it would rebrand to Virgin Trains USA, a seemingly apropos partnership. Unfortunately, by mid-2020, that deal fell apart in the midst of disagreements and lawsuits, so the train is still the bright line. As Florida passed us by, I decided to explore a little bit. The premium car includes 21-inch seats with the availability of individual seats. In other words, you can do what I did and reserve a spot without a seatmate. The smart car includes 19-inch seats in a 2x2 two two configuration. Again, drinks and snacks are available for purchase here. The train is also fully ADA accessible and offers level boarding that makes it easier for wheelchairs, strollers, and wheeled suitcases. There's even space for bikes, and the trains are pet friendly. The bathroom was large and clean, much nicer than, say, an Amtrak bathroom. Passengers are encouraged by these signs to make calls between cars and are even given this bench seat. Free Wi-Fi is available, and even though it's not blazing fast, it allowed me to catch up on some emails during the trip. Now, it's not high speed yet. The top speed on this stretch of track is 79 miles per hour. But when the extension to Orlando opens up, the train will travel as fast as 125 miles per hour on its way to Orlando International Airport. The entire trip between Miami and Orlando should take about three hours. But again, I was only on board for 72 minutes from Miami to West Palm Beach. And that included a brief stop in Fort Lauderdale to drop off some passengers and pick up some others. As we make our way into West Palm Beach, I think it makes sense to think about the whole experience. The best way I know to do that is with the Jeb score, but be sure to stick around to the end to see the unique transfer Brightline makes available to its passengers. Now, the Jeb score is an unscientific and light-hearted scoring system that ranks five factors. We'll look at the lounge, the seat, the in-seat entertainment, the food, and the service. The lounge is top-notch. It feels a lot more like a business class lounge for an airline than a railroad lounge here in the US. No doubt about it, this is worth five stars. The seats are great for a trip of this length. Uh, nothing special, but, and I'm not sure I've ever said this about a seat, they just look good. I hope the light colored leather stands the test of time, but it does make the whole car feel bright and on brand. Four stars here. When it comes to the in-seat entertainment, I guess the passing scenes of Florida are nice and access to Wi-Fi is helpful, but there's not much else. That's not too surprising. This is worth three stars. The food and drinks are fine. They included mixed drinks, beer, wine, non-alcoholic options. And frankly, with such short distances, I'm not sure you need more than these types of snacks. Four stars here. The service was great. Our attendant engaged with everyone on board and seemed genuinely excited for those of us who were first timers. Five stars here. So that leaves the Brightline train with service from Miami to West Palm Beach and eventually Orlando with 21 out of a possible 25 stars. We arrived in West Palm Beach right on time. And it gets better. Thanks to a Tesla, I got a ride to the airport. As they work out the kinks in the booking process, this transfer was free. Eventually it'll have a cost. I'll link to the Brightline's website in the description below where you can find the most current information about their offering. As for me, I don't like driving, particularly in Florida. So using the Brightline to get up and down the coast is a great option and makes it possible to price out flights to and from different airports while maintaining easy access to other parts of the state. You'll certainly find me back on board the Brightline sometime soon. Between now and the next time, see you on the rails.